We're gonna get this installed under the hood, get it all wired up to the battery. We're then gonna run a wire through the firewall to go to the controller. And then once we get to that second part and get actually inside, he's running the bullet point mount solutions mount here. And they specifically make a dash mount that is built for the Oxbeam eight gang switch controller. So we're gonna utilize that. Started working on wiring some of these lights this morning and I was gonna do all of it, but it ended up taking longer than I expected. So we were only able to get the two outer lights installed and wired up. I'm gonna power on switch number one. Whoa. Hey guys, what's going on? My name's Chris. Right behind me is the Fortune Taco, but today I am not working on the Fortune Taco. I'm gonna be doing an install on my buddy Sean's Tacoma. This is the Blueberry Taco. And today we have an Oxbeam switch controller that we're gonna be installing on his truck. He just recently got a couple different things installed on the truck, like this Rego roof rack. He got his roof rack all set up with these rigid 360s along the roof. And then Rego also came out with this new styled front bumper for the third gen Tacoma. And that is also aligned with a couple different rigid lights. We got this light bar in here and then two pod lights. And he got a switch controller so he can now start controlling all of his lights and whatever else he ends up adding to the truck later on. But today we're just gonna add in this switch controller We'll do a little bit of testing with it, kind of just briefly go over how it works, and that'll be it for the video. I also want to give a huge shout out to Blake. He is the manager over here at Rack Attack in Tempe, Arizona. He allowed me to borrow the shop for the day so he can do this install on Sean's truck. If you have not heard of Rack Attack, they are an overland shop. They are in multiple different states, but Arizona has two different locations in Phoenix and Tempe. And they sell multiple different items to outfit your rig for overlanding. If that's something you're into, make sure to check out Rack Attack. I had to come up here to Tempe to meet Sean so I could do this install, and it was just a lot easier to do it in the shop rather than doing it at Sean's house or my house. Thanks to Oxbeam for sponsoring this video today. They sent me out this eight gang switch panel also has RGB backlight built into it. Comes with some stickers as every off-road product does. Um, so there's just a sheet of stickers here and this is gonna be for the actual switch controller itself. So they come blank. It is kind of just a clear frosted button. You'll see when we actually get this installed. The backlights are in here and this button lights up, but when you put the sticker over it, just the writing and text and stuff on there is gonna light up and illuminate the button. The switch controller itself, they're all tactile click buttons, which is pretty nice. Then the under the hood control module. This is where you would mount this under the hood. You have a positive and negative going to your battery. And then each one of your uh, triggers or each one of your accessories goes into here. And the main benefit here, why a lot of people like doing switch controllers, is so all your accessories you have on the exterior of the truck can be run into the engine bay, connected to this, and then from here, there's only one wire that goes from here into the cabin of the truck, which runs to this control box. So anytime you wanna add additional accessories or all your wiring is just gonna stay right under your engine bay, you don't have to worry about running 10 to 12 different wires through your firewall. There's just one single wire that goes through the firewall which connects to the actual controller. That makes it convenient, so you're not ripping through that firewall and putting a whole bunch of wires through it, which can be a pain. So we're gonna get this installed under the hood, get it all wired up to the battery. We are then gonna run a wire through the firewall to go to the controller. And then once we get to that second part and get actually inside, Sean has already gone and bought the mount, but he's running the bullet point mount solutions mount here. And they specifically make a dash mount that is built for the Oxbeam eight gang switch controller. So we're gonna utilize that and put his switch gang or put his switch controller right in the middle of the console there. And we'll do some testing with just a little bit of lights here started working on wiring some of these lights this morning and I was gonna do all of it, but it ended up taking longer than I expected. So we were only able to get the two outer lights installed and wired up. So we're gonna test those out. We won't be able to test the middle ones yet, but maybe we'll do a later on follow-up video with Sean and test this thing out and see what all of his lighting looks like, maybe in more of like a nighttime setting. If you guys wanna see more of the Blueberry Taco here on the channel, 
Let me know right now in the comments below, and we'll see if we can make some more content featuring the blueberry taco. So normally this control box would get mounted somewhere either here on a mounting plate. Um, Oxbeam offers, or they supply, kind of like a universal mounting plate that this control panel would go on, but because it's universal, it just has these two little prongs here. They'd have to go somewhere where you can mount it, but you would have to have a spot in the vehicle that works with it that you can have, that you can mount this to. You'd have to drill a hole into. There's not really anywhere that works in the Tacoma. So this mounting plate most likely will not get used on this install. So what we'll most likely do, uh, we're either gonna drill holes into the fuse box cover. I've seen some people do that, mount it directly to the fuse box, um, or Sean will have to zip tie it somewhere. We'll have to put it somewhere just in the meantime until he gets some type of tray system, but that'll be up to him to decide today. We're just getting this lease put in, wired up, and running on the truck. Other end of the positive is gonna go to the positive stud on the ox beam. I don't know if you can tell here. This one is red, that one is black, so it's obvious which one is positive, which one is negative. You wanna feed all of your wires up through these two little grooves here. So once it comes time to cleaning this thing up and you put the lid back on, all the wires will feed through that hole and they won't interfere with the lid on the ox beam. It comes with its own little circuit breaker from Oxbeam. This is really nice. Um, just because of the situation, we don't really have this mounted securely. I don't want to add this in so it's not flopping around. But the system comes with two power cables. So what you should actually do to play it safe and install it correctly. So you'll take the cable from the battery to one prong. And then the second cable will go from one prong to the controller. You're pretty much putting this little breaker box, fuse breaker, in between the power from the battery to the system. So this thing can trip if there was some type of wiring issue or some power issue before getting to the battery and causing damage. This is just like a fail safe for electronics. It's a good thing to have. Uh, we'll be putting it probably on Sean's setup here eventually, but more when he gets a permanent place to mount it, just because we're putting this here temporarily um, and not actually drilling into the fuse box yet. We don't quite know where he wants to put it. I don't want to install this just so, like I said, it's not flopping around and stuff. For the ground, you can either go direct to the ground on the battery, or there's a factory chassis ground right here on the side of the fender. So after getting that positive and negative wire attached to the control box here, the next thing we're gonna to want to add is the ignition switch. So by using the Adafuse supplied by Oxbeam, you are gonna tap this into whatever fuse you find on your vehicle that has 12 volt power only when the truck is powered on. By tapping into this, it kind of is like an on and off switch for this control box. So whenever there is accessory power activated to the vehicle, it turns this on. When you turn the truck off, this has no power at all. So this can't be used when the truck's off to avoid killing the battery, especially if you have any lights on or anything, they will turn off when the truck turns off. It's kind of just a good feature to have to not drain your battery. If you don't want this feature and you want this thing to just have power all the time, um, I guess if you did want that to just have power all the time, instead of going to an accessory fuse, you can go to any fuse that has power constantly all the time, tap into that, and this will always have power no matter what, even when your truck's powered off, if that's the route you wanna go. Once we get that tapped in and we get that ignition fuse added, we can then start to run the wire through the firewall and control our actual uh, controller in the cabin. All right, so after going through many of these fuses, Toyota is very tricky with their fuses. Over here, I ended up finding a 15 amp that comes back to the EFI fuse, which is related to the electronic fuel pump. Um, that is kind of just a fuse that tells that to kick on or kick off when there is accessory power added to the vehicle. So that's exactly the type of fuse you want to be able to tap into, something that will only kick on when your accessory power has been powered up. Now that we got that, I'm gonna just clean this up a little bit. Our next step is gonna be feeding this wire through the firewall and getting that controller put inside. Right in here, if you can kind of see down there, we have some of these wires coming through into the cab. That is a weatherproof boot that comes in from the cab. We ended up using like a steel fishing wire. 
And if you feed that up here through that boot into the engine bay, what you can do is using some black electrical tape or whatnot, connect it to this cable, gently pull it through, and then that'll feed this wire into your cabin where you can run it to that controller inside the cab. You can pull all that in there. We'll just keep the slack in the cab. Uh, all right, that should be good right there. All right, now with that cable coming through the firewall, and we'll find a way to clean this up and run it all through the dash. But we need to bring it up to this mount. Uh, what we're probably doing, we're gonna pull that mount off real quick and mount that to the switch controller. And then we'll get this cook, hooked up, connect some of the pod lights to it. We'll do a little bit of testing. So using the screws that came from Oxbeam, there are a couple holes drilled into the back of here. This is gonna screw flat on that. It'll then connect up here, connect up here to the dash mount and it'll actually be a pretty good setup. So if you do have a bullet point mount solutions mount and you're either looking to get an Oxbeam switch controller or you already have one, there's a solution for you to mount your controller. All right, so got the bullet point mount solutions mount hooked on there. Oh yeah. I'm gonna turn the accessory power on for the truck. Oh, look at that. We got power going to the aux beam. When you do click on the switches, we have nothing wired up just yet, but those lights indicate that the switch is turned on. So let's get something wired up, flip these on, and then we can see if hopefully it's all working correctly. So the wire harness I got for just a couple of the pods that are up here on the roof, just for testing purposes, and to just kind of show a couple of the functions here on the switch controller. Uh, with the aux beam, you're gonna have your switch one and two are a 30 amp, three and four, 20 amp, and then so on and so forth, goes down to two tens and two fives. It's clearly marked on each of the poles here, positive and negative for each, and also what the amperage is. Make sure you're not changing these fuses and trying to upgrade and make these all a 30. They are designed this way on purpose, and the switch controller itself can only hold what is currently in here. So you can replace them if they blow, but don't try to upgrade these to gain more power out of them. And then the third feature we have here is gonna be his backlight function. So we're gonna put that into the positive of switch number two just for now, could be changed later, it's just testing. This one's only gonna need a positive because the negative is already in switch number one. So as long as that's just grounded and to a negative, it'll still function and work properly. We have that all wired up. Positive and negative on switch one here, and then just the positive on switch two for the backlight. So going inside the truck, we went ahead and added two switches to switch one and switch two. Now let's see what those look like. So outside, we have nothing on right now. I'm gonna go ahead and have Sean flip on switch one just to show these two outers flipping on. Those things are really freaking bright. Even though we only have two out of all his six pods on the roof here, it's really hard to tell in this video, but these lights are blinding. So go ahead and switch that one off, Sean, and then flip it to the second switch. And the second switch is gonna be pretty dim, but I'm sure it'll look a lot better at night. This is the backlighting from these rigid lights. So this one here on the right has a white backlight. And then if you can kind of tell in the one over there, it is green. Sean, see if you can cycle that switch and get the lights to change color. All right, so you saw there, that one just turned red. Now it just turned blue. You're actually off right now. So it's back on, but that one's back to white, and that one's over there white. So now they're kind of linked up on white. See if you can cycle it one more time, see if we can get it to a different color. So with these, and I think it just has to do with the, the lag and delay of the switch controller here, but normally with these rigid lights, if you just cycle the power on and off, it'll cycle to the next backlight color. So now this one just turned to green. That one over there is now a teal backlight. So because we haven't just wired to one wire, it is hard to kind of sync these things up, but sometimes if you just switch it real quick, it'll kind of reset them and get them on the same color, but they've been kind of cycling different colors. Uh, that's a little issue we'll have to kind of kink out. It just has to do with the wiring. Um, and like I said, the lag and delay of the aux beam. But we have them wired up to switch one, switch two. Another cool thing with this aux beam switch controller is there is a phone app and the phone app shows you the controller. So you can actually control all this right from your phone. If you toggle that switch, it turns the lights on so you have Bluetooth functionality of your switch controller. You don't have to be in the cab and clicking on the actual toggle switches. You can use your cell phone. And then you can see this color wheel down here. If we change this color wheel and you see on Sean's phone, it's blue. 
Now it's green. As these buttons here change, it actually corresponds with the backlight of the aux beam and it changes on the controller exactly how you see it on his cell phone. So the Bluetooth functionality there is actually pretty awesome with this switch controller. Now that's gonna finish it up, at least for this install today. I know I mentioned to you guys, this is not finalized. Obviously I know it does not look the cleanest, but we just didn't really have a solution yet for a final mounting position. So maybe I'll do a follow-up video once Sean gets some type of mounting here. I'll do another video doing an install and getting this finalized, doing a part two of the Oxbeam install on Sean's Tacoma. But for today, that is gonna be it. Um, I'm thinking this is gonna be the coolest backlights for this Voodoo Blue Tacoma, especially once we have all six of those lit up and blue backlight with the Voodoo Blue paint. I think that looks awesome. Also want to give a shout out to Blake and the Tempe team over at Rack Attack. Appreciate you guys for letting me use your shop for the day to do this install on Sean's truck. That is gonna be it for this video, guys. I appreciate you sticking around to the end. If you enjoyed the video, as always, make sure to drop a thumbs up on the video. And if you are not subscribed, make sure, make sure to hit that subscribe button so you'll be notified whenever I post a future video on the channel. If you have any questions about Sean's Voodoo Blue Tacoma, the Oxbeam install we did, possibly even the rigid lights. I've never messed with those before. This is the first time I've ever really done some wiring or seen some of these in person. They're pretty awesome. They're also located locally here in Arizona. But if you have any questions about anything related to this video, drop a comment down below. I try my best to respond to every comment on my videos. Once again, thanks to Oxbeam for sponsoring this video. If you're interested in the switch controller, I'll have a link in the description down below for the Oxbeam switch controller we just installed today. Appreciate you for sticking around. I will see you on the next video, guys.